Hi, welcome to Eat Right Now. My name is Jill Jennings, and I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist at the Department of Family Medicine at ECU's Brody School of Medicine. If you're someone who has been trying to control their diabetes better through diet, or looking to find better ways of managing your weight, or even just trying to feel better overall, you may have heard a lot of times about what you can't eat. I'd like to talk about what you can eat. Let's get started. Today I'd like to make some smoothies. You can find smoothies from a convenience store all the way to the airport. But not all smoothies are created equal. A lot of them have healthy ingredients in them. But if you have too many or too much of those healthful ingredients, or maybe the addition of some not so healthful ingredients, it can turn into uh, something that, that works against you in trying to, trying to control your weight or even to try to control your carb, uh, carbohydrate intake. So I'd like to make three examples of smoothies today. One that's more of a, um, a, a snack or a treat. It's like a, a vanilla milkshake of sorts. Another very basic um, banana, orange juice, yogurt, and a little bit of flaxseed or wheat germ, whichever you prefer. And then, um, and then another one that, that uses peaches and some fresh mint and orange juice and vanilla yogurt. So I think I'll start with the basic one. And I'll use this blender here. This is called a stick blender or an immersion blender. And it's a very handy tool to have in the kitchen, especially if you like to make smoothies. This is something that I use every morning of the week. It's easy to clean, it's easy to operate, and it's the perfect thing for a smoothie for two people. So I was about to plug it in like this, but it wouldn't be stable that way, so I'll wait until all my ingredients are in the cup. So I've got one banana, a whole banana, just after it's ripened. So there's very little green left on the banana. It looks like this, as opposed to this. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do with those in a minute. So I've got one banana. I've got one cup of orange juice, 100% orange juice. You could use another juice, actually. That's the benefit of making a smoothie, is that you can really mix and match fruits and bases for greater variety. Here is one cup of Greek yogurt. I like putting the Greek yogurt in, in the morning especially, because Greek yogurt has more protein in it two tablespoons of ground flax meal. This will do a couple of things. It will add fiber, it will add a little more protein, and it will add a source of two things you've probably heard of before. Um, antioxidants, and there's a particular antioxidant called a lignin, and it's very high in those. The other thing is that it's a plant source of omega-3. Omega-3s are usually hurt you here in fish oil or, or wild salmon, or here's a plant source of it. So it's a nice addition, and you don't really taste it. It gives it a little bit of texture, but it's um, just slightly, slightly nutty, and it's nice. If you don't have flax meal, you can certainly use wheat germ. If you don't have either, that's okay. The smoothie still stands on its own. I'm going to quick blend it here. Okay, so that's well blended. Notice I took it apart right away before I go to the next step so that it doesn't tip over. is a perfect breakfast for two. One thing I want to do here is, so that's about one cup. I have a couple of glasses here to illustrate something. It can be confusing. So a moment ago I mentioned that not all smoothies are created equal. Not only can it be a matter of the ingredients that are used, but if you use, if you put it into a glass that's just too many servings, I know the calories, the carbohydrate count, the fat count, and all of the other nutrition information about this one cup here. But depending on the glass, that could all change. That could increase dramatically. So this looks 
roughly the same size as this glass, but in fact, it's about one and a half times the size. So if you're counting calories, counting carbohydrates, that would change what you're taking in. So initially, if you don't know what a cup is, you know, measure it out and then put it into the glass you know you're going to like. Here's another example. If this is your favorite glass and you know that each morning you want to drink a smoothie out of this or each afternoon you would like to drink it as a snack, pour it into a cup or pour it into another glass that you know equals a cup and then pour it into your favorite glass. And you see? So by not filling it, you're getting the serving you're, you're looking for without too many additional calories. One thing I'd like to show you real quick is what to do with bananas once they've gotten a little too ripe. So here, here's a nice ripeness to make your smoothie with or just to have on its own or on a bowl of cereal or, cereal or oatmeal. But once they start to brown, and they tend to do that more quickly this time of year because it's so much warmer. Um, or maybe you bought, they were on sale and you bought twice as many as you needed. And you couldn't use them as, as fast as they browned on you. This is what I like to do. And with regard to making smoothies, if you can freeze your leftover bananas, then you've got bananas to use as your ice cubes. It's important though in the process that you freeze them individually about this thickness. I have a cookie sheet lined with wax paper and that's simply so that they'll be easy to remove afterwards. So I'm going to layer them in a single layer. And if you had a lot of bananas, and even I have got more bananas than this cookie sheet will allow me to use, just use a bigger cookie sheet. Or do two of them. Do a couple of separate batches. That has a little bit of brown, so I'll cut it up. It wasn't very deep. So again, just about maybe half inch thick. And also, depending on the size of your blender, if you have one of those stick blenders that I've used in other, with, in other smoothies and other demonstrations, you might want to make the banana slices a little bit thinner. But if you're putting it in a kitchen stand-up blender, half inch or even an inch would be fine because it chops ice cubes. It will be able to chop your icy bananas. So simply Cut the bananas, put them on a line sheet. This could be foil, this could be parchment, it could be nothing. It would just mean that you had a stickier cookie sheet in the end. I will put this in the freezer, and after about, mm, I would say an hour, they'll be frozen solid. You take them out, but if you forget after an hour and you remember the next morning or you remember that, that evening, that's fine. They'll just be really frozen. Uh, just take them off the wax paper, put them into a freezer safe bag, and they'll be individual little discs, and you can use them as you need them. Enjoy your frozen bananas. Next, I will make a peach. Peach perfect smoothie. This is nice because right now peaches are in season, but if you didn't have any on hand, or it was the middle of the winter, and you really wanted this recipe, you could use canned peaches, which is what I've got here. They're canned peaches in their own juice, and I refrigerated them so they're ice cold, and so they'll make the they'll they'll make the smoothie even you know smoother and colder and more creamy. It's a way to offer you more versatility. And a note on that is you really could use any canned fruit. It seems as though there's misconception that canned fruit and canned vegetables aren't as healthy for you, but the truth is in some cases they can be more because they're actually picked and packaged at around the same time at their freshness. So you could, in the middle of the winter, a canned peach is probably going to have a higher nutritional value and better taste than a store-bought one would be, would have. Same with vegetables. You want to make sure that when you're buying canned fruit and vegetables that they're not packed in heavy syrup or they're not overly salted. If they are, and that's your only choice, then what you can do is just rinse them and drain them. 
So he has canned peaches, about two cups. A little bit of orange juice. Some vanilla yogurt. So this isn't the Greek variety, it's just, it's just vanilla low-fat yogurt, which has a nice sweetness to it. But not overly sweet. And then a little bit of fresh mint. Canned pineapple would actually taste good in this recipe. Strawberries would taste good. Again, back to the idea that smoothies can be any combination you want it to be. You've got the base, you've got the fruit, you've got the liquid. You can play around. As is with so much cooking that you do at home, it's improvisation. So take what you've got and make it work for you. That's nice and smooth. The little flecks of mint are real pretty, and it's also quite fragrant. Reminds you of summer. And I didn't even use a fresh peach. So keeping in mind what I said about the, the portion size, really, there's a lot here, and it's good for me, it's good for you, but not too much of it. So I'll just pour about a cup's worth. I know that this glass is a cup. I just want to point this out. You can see how easy the cleanup is. There's just one container, one, one wand to wash up, and you're ready to make it again the next day or that afternoon. Or if you have more than you can eat in the morning, put it back in the refrigerator and have a snack later. Thirdly is the vanilla milkshake. It's bananas and skim milk and ice. So the ice is going to give it that real thick ice cream texture and temperature. So I've got about two cups of ice here. I've got two cups of skim milk. If you only had 1% on hand, you could use 1%. Milk, whether it is whole, 2%, 1%, or skim, has the same amount of calcium. And if it has vitamin D added to it, it has the same amount of vitamin D. The difference between the four is that the calories go down as you go down in percentage and the, the saturated fat goes down. So keep that in mind. This is a great source of calcium. I've got about a cup of bananas. So that was two bananas, two whole bananas, roughly this size. Just use the other spoon with yogurt on it. And then I'm going to add some unsweetened cocoa powder. Two tablespoons of it. This is unsweetened. And the addition of a little bit of honey will make up for that unsweetened. Otherwise, if you didn't have some sweetener in there, it could be a little bitter. But here I'm going to add just two tablespoons of honey. And until you get the hang of how much honey is in, actually in a tablespoon, it's best to measure it. Otherwise, you could end up putting too much. And again, that's going to change your calories. That's going to change your carbohydrate count. So. I'm just going to squeeze it until I know it's about a tablespoon. There you go. And then I've got some pure vanilla extract. That'll add a nice element to it. I'll put about two in here, too. This is an easy recipe to remember. Two, 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 two. Whenever you're using a blender, of course, remember the lid because I've in the past forgotten the lid and I've been very sorry, you can imagine. Blend till smooth.
as I'm blending this and seeing all the colors come together and it looks like a chocolate milkshake. I realize I didn't taste the other one, but this is the one I'm going to taste. And here's the glass again. So that's about a cup. That's the serving size, so you can see the difference. Let me just see if the flavors are right here. It does indeed taste like a vanilla chocolate mocha milkshake. It's delicious. And there's so few calories. There's 17 grams of carbohydrate. There's 90 calories in just this cup. So if you wanted a snack that was high in protein, low in calories, low in carbohydrate, you just needed to pick me up or you wanted to start your morning off with this. You've got fruit, you've got protein, you've got calcium, you've got, it's, it, it contains, you know, everything to, to start the day off right or to finish the afternoon off right when you need a snack. The same with these. So if you would like to make these recipes at home, please go to our website. Otherwise, eat right now, eat right tomorrow, eat right every day. Thanks for joining me.